GM of the Vikings, Rick Spielman, joining us now. How are you, Rick? Good. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Um, were you at practice that day when Teddy went down? Uh, yeah, I was. I was standing behind the defense, and then uh, as you sat there, and it was like the third play of team period, and it was a non-contact injury where he just kind of tripped up his heels a little bit, and unfortunately his body weight went onto his leg as he was trying to catch his balance, and then uh, and then, then the rest is history. Is it a, how long is that recuperation recovery for the I dislocation? I think we don't know yet. I think, uh, you know, once we get in, he has his surgery. Um, I know they've done the MRIs and the, and the CT scans and everything, but once uh, he, they go in there and actually do the surgery, see what they have to repair, then we may have a better idea, but we also have to wait to see how this this uh, rehab goes and how quickly he can come around. So all that is, is unknown at this point. What happens first? You receive phone calls about quarterback possibilities <laughs> or you place calls? No, we, uh, once that happened and everybody just felt horrible for the kid, uh, knowing how much work he put into it, how he looked uh, during our off-season program through training camp, um, he was he- heading into his third year, and even in that uh, third preseason game against San Diego, uh, you can see the difference in Teddy. Uh, and we were very excited because usually quarterbacks about their third or fourth year is, is when they truly uh, truly hit it if they're going to be good players. And we shot, thought for sure uh, that Teddy was, was showing all those signs. Uh, but right afterwards, and you just you know you're sick to your stomach, um, not for as much as you are for the incident, but more for Teddy and what type of kid he is. But I uh, gathered our staff up uh, about an hour later, and from there, um, you know, we started to try to lay out a game plan. Okay, you settle on Sam Bradford, but is Sam Brad? Were you looking for immediacy uh, and long term, or just immediacy? I think we looked at everything. Uh, I think the first thing we thought of, or in my mind, was we have everybody has confidence in Sean Hill um, and what he's been. He's been in this offense for two years. Every time he's had an opportunity to get out there in a preseason, uh, he 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 plays very well. Uh, I know he can run this offense. We have a great supporting staff. I think um, around uh, around the quarterback here. Uh, especially with 28 in the backfield. I think we have a very young and up-and-coming defense that's that's a pretty good as well. So we had a lot of pieces in place, we felt, to take the next jump from where we were last year. Uh, we attacked the offseason on some of our needs by signing a couple offensive linemen to bolster that uh, that position and uh, just layered in another draft that we're very excited about some of these young guys um, that we put in. But I think the the biggest thing that came to my mind was what happens if Sean Hill goes down, and that's the first thing you think because you no know, no one expected the uh, the unfortunate incident that Teddy had. Um, so the, the question is then what what do we do? So we laid out all the different scenarios from veterans, guys on the street, guys that may get released at the fifty three uh, potential trades for young guys that are still up and coming. Uh, potential trades out there. And by the time we went through that process, I made a lot of phone calls. Uh, it's funny when you talk to your counterparts, they feel bad for you that you lost their quarterback. And, oh, by the way, it's going to cost you this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said that they sensed blood was in the water there. How outlandish did these trade offers get? Well, some of them were, you know, they, they know. And, and it's just like it, this was business. And you knew it was going to be a high compensation from a draft standpoint, but they were also asking uh, for some of our, I think, core young players that are going to have, uh, you know, great futures for as Minnesota Vikings. And I told them that basically we try to draft well here. We have a great coaching staff that develops this young talent, and these guys are all just now getting to the prime of their career or in the prime of their career. And I do not. To me, that's giving up the future when you when you take some of these young core guys that are pretty good football players mm-hmm. uh, and give that away. I felt a little bit more comfortable from the draft perspective because we still have eight picks. We have a second, two-thirds, two-fourths, and the rest of our draft. We have a history of moving up and down in the draft. I think I had seven wor- first-round picks in, in three years at one point. Um, so as long as you have the ammunition still or the draft uh, – 
cryptocurrency. You can do a lot of things, and I think we'll still be able to do that in the 17 draft. So I understand the timing of this, and it's a lot different when you're in the off season and you have time to haggle and go back and forth, and there's not such a sense of urgency or even as you're getting prepared for the draft. But this is something that had to be turned over in 48 hours. Everybody's opening up their season, you know, it, you know, eight days from when this was occurring, and uh, you have to try to make the best of your situation. And I know, you know, I've, with the uh, blessing from the ownership to be aggressive and talking with our coaches and everything, I think we have a chance to have a pretty good football team, and I, I promise those guys that I would do everything I can uh, to try to get to create something that, that would give us the best situation. And after weighing all the options out there, I think there was no question that uh, being able to get Sam Bradford here uh, with this with this team uh, was definitely our best option. But I also understood that it's going to cost you probably more than you're, wa- you're wanting to pay. And I looked at the Philadelphia side, too. They're giving up a starting quarterback. Uh, Sam played extremely well the second half of the season for him, and especially the last three games he was really playing well. Uh, he, he lit it up in the preseason. So to get a veteran uh, that is has played a lot of games as a starting quarterback, um, and he's still young for that position, and also to have Pat Shermer on our staff, who gave us great insight on Sam. Not only did he coach him in St. Louis, but he also had him in Philadelphia. Talking to Rick Spielman, the Vikings GM, uh, Sam Bradford's role, game one, is what? Uh, that's yet to be determined. Really? I know, uh, he got in here um, within 12 hours. He was, you know, we practiced on Sunday. He was out there practicing. We practiced on Monday. Uh, I know the coaches are going to weigh all their options. Um, they're going to see how quickly he can come along, how quickly he can learn the offense. And the, the biggest thing when a quarterback comes in is there's a lot of factors. It's not like plugging in a receiver or another position. He has to understand the scheme of the offense and understand the protections because um, when we make the line calls and the protection adjustments, he has to know where the, uh, the line is sliding, uh, who they're picking up, uh, what blitz are they picking up, and where his outlets are? So that's the uh, that's the biggest thing that he has to get caught up on. But uh, I think uh, Coach Zimmer will make that determination uh, when he's ready. I can't imagine how tense that must have been. Where you're trying to find a quarterback, you know, you got a playoff team, and I mean, I just. It's it's got to. <laughs> That's why you. Uh, it's it's not a bad gig there you have over there. No, at the radio show, no, right? <laughs> not at all. I mean, my mine mine can be tense, but I'm not changing lives like you are. <laughs> where all of a sudden you're late at night, you're in the middle of the night, you're probably up, you know, by yourself, going, "What am I going to do here?" And then you got to pull the trigger on that. That's uh, some pretty tense stuff. It's yeah, it, it was very tense, and the the timing of it uh, made it even more tense and. You know, I think, you know, the the Philadelphia Eagles and Howie had to make a very, very tough decision as well as we did. Um, but, you know, I, I do believe that after we were able to uh, to, to finalize a trade that we're a uh, better football team today than, than we were without Sam Bradford. Well, Rick, good luck against Tennessee the rest of the season. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate you having me on, Dan. That's Rick Spielman, Vikings GM. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.